Good morning. Good morning. A very warm welcome to this online all age service. Welcome. Our online holiday club has been running this week. We've uh, delivered 92 bags to houses in and around Beaujet and Wollaston and beyond. And uh, a huge thank you to all those people who've mm -hmm. been involved in that, in putting a holiday club together and getting that produced. During the week, uh, we've had uh, songs and stories and drama, craft, and science experiments, some that went ever so well, and some that didn't. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one worked, but not that one. Why did yours not work? I couldn't resist showing that. After Louise prays for us this morning, we're going to hear a psalm that Thomas has produced and then we'll lead into some worship. Lord, we thank you for the Holiday Club this last week and um, as Adrian said, we thank you for all those that have uh, contributed to it. And Lord, we do pray for every family that's participated in the online stuff and in the bag. And Lord, as we as we come together in worship this morning and think about the life of David, Lord, would you bless this time together? Would we receive from you this morning? Would you feed us this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Psalm 23. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word. You let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You receive my drooping head, my cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life.
my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea Silence, you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the dark different because like we're on national lockdown so the world's changed quite a lot so then I thought God has um one thing God's done for me is like got me through it like even though the world's like a film like a weird movie type thing I'm still upbeat positive living life you know um yeah, that's one thing. That's my life in lockdown. Um, I'm also really enjoying just life slowed down, really. Like, towards the start of lockdown, when life was just like, nothing was open, not even the fish and chip shop. Like, you had no choice but to, like, play a Monopoly and charades and watch films. That was really fun. And so that's what my life was like, really, just Monopoly, films, just 
everyday normal stuff. So that's ties in quite well actually because if you think about it, it's kind of like God was like, well, I think this is one way that it reassured me because I thought like, maybe this is like God thinking, hang on guys, because before this life was a bit crazy anyway, before a global pandemic. So now it's like, oh, maybe God's like trying to slow everything down. National pandemic, obviously, Swings and roundabouts with that one. But everyone spend time with their family, realise what's actually important in life. You know? Not the hustle and bustle. You know? So that's one thing. Um Yeah. Just I'm quite enjoying it actually. Hi uh, good morning. I have another poem for you. What is it you do, the Lord said to me? What is it you say that lets people see? I'm a taxi driver, I said, or so I thought. And the Lord said, are you? Are you? You're not doing as you ought. Think carefully of what you say. You may know the roads, but do you know the way? Get off this roundabout. You need to go straight. It's number 777. It says heaven on the gate. This may be your job, but it's not your occupation. Your route is important, not just your destination. You can't carry on without a care. Get in, get out, pay the fare. What was the last thing you did for me? A word from the gospel to let them see? You need to think of others. It's not all about you. But I have a cunning plan. This is what you should do. In order to get others to come to me, you need to learn the art of writing poetry. Well, I can't do that. That's not my job. Never a rhyme has come from my gob. I'll get on with it. You'll be fine once you're going. It's not rocket science, it's only a poem. Spread the good news. Cultivate their mind. Let's save everyone. Leave no one behind. Just keep planting, sowing them seeds. You plant the crops, I'll pull the weeds. And do it with care. Maybe a bit calmer. Oh, I said, now I'm a farmer. Oh, if you like, said the Lord. Just do what you do. There are no limits now that I am with you. And a secret from heaven I'll share with you too. If you concentrate on me, I'll concentrate on you. Well, we're now going to hear two stories from David's life. Uh, the first one is about David and Bathsheba. And the second one is about David bringing back the ark. If you'd like to follow these stories in your own Bible, then you'll find them in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And also 2 Samuel chapter 6 and 1 Chronicles chapter 13 and chapter 15. One day when David was king and his armies were at war, he spied a beautiful woman. He sent a servant to find out who she was. Her name was Bathsheba and her husband fought in David's army. David dined with Bathsheba and they went to bed together. Later Bathsheba found out she was pregnant and David ordered that her husband be sent to the front lines of battle so that he would be killed. After Bathsheba had mourned for her husband, she went to David's palace and became his wife. God sent Nathan the prophet to David. I've sinned against God. David realised. Yes, you have, said Nathan. God made you king of Israel and gave you all you have now. David went before God and worshipped. When Bathsheba bore David's son, the Lord took him into heaven as a consequence for David's sins. Bathsheba and David mourned for their lost son, but continued to worship before God. Soon they had another son, and this brought them much happiness. King David had an idea. Now that he was king over all of Israel, he suggested let's gather the people and bring God's special box back to Jerusalem. Now what David was talking about was God's special chest. And I have made, this is just a cardboard box covered in gold paper, but God's special chest 
it had a solid gold lid. It had special carrying handles and on the top of it were golden angels. This is one I borrowed from Wollaston Church that's actually wooden but the ones on God's special chest were golden and it was a sign of God's presence with Israel. It was very special and God had given very specific instructions about it. David got a new ox cart and he organised an ox and they started to move God's special box on the cart. The people all joined with singing and tambourines and worshipping God. At home, you may have made a tambourine by now. You may have something you can use as a shaker. I'm going to let us have a musical instrument. So at home, let's be loud at home. We praise God. We praise God. Hallelujah. But suddenly, disaster struck. The oxen stumbled like that. And the ox cart stumbled. And Uzzah grabbed God's special box and died. You could have heard a pin drop. All the celebrating stopped. David, he was angry, he was afraid, and he left God's special chest at the home of Obed-Edom. And God blessed Obed Eden. And time passes. David didn't turn away from God, no even though he'd messed up, even though poor Uzza was dead, he arranged to move the chest again. And this time he did things right. This time he followed the things written by Moses about how God wanted things done. This time he used the special carrying handles and he used God's high priest. And the priests carried the chest of God very carefully using the special carrying handles. And again, all the people praise God. So again, let's have a musical interlude and praise God. We praise God! We praise God! Hallelujah! David danced with all his might. He worshipped God as hard as he could all the way into Jerusalem. And his wife looked at him. Michal, her name was. She looked at him and she was disgusted. She thought, what a fool. David gave all the people gifts of bread, raisins and meat. And then he went home to bless his family. Michal met him as he was coming home to her and she was angry. She said, what a complete fool you've made of yourself, looking so stupid dancing. David had an answer. He said this, to God's glory, I'll dance even more recklessly than this. I'll gladly look a fool for God. When disaster strikes, when things don't go to plan, it is so tempting sometimes to give up, to not bother, certainly not to turn to worship. But again and again in God's book, the Bible, and in people's lives today, we find that strength and healing come in surrendering to God in worship. There is so much power, strength and praise in worshipping deciding to praise God, deciding to praise.
In the David Psalm we have today, this is one of some of the things David says, going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless performance is nothing to you. He says, I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. God, my salvation. I'll sing anthems to your life-giving ways. Unbutton my lips and I'll let loose with your praise. In preparation for this holiday club, I've been enjoying thinking so much about David and reading again the stories of him. And I love what his life can teach us about worship. The two stories from holiday club we've just seen, we see how David, he messes up with Bathsheba. He commits adultery at best, it could have been rape. He murders her husband in a contrived manner but he still comes to God and he worships. He comes to God for forgiveness and worships. His baby dies and he worships. In the second story, we see how he organises a grand procession to bring in the Ark of God and he worships. And then Uzzah dies. And then David gathers himself, he corrects the error in organisation that has had such deadly consequences and he goes about the second procession God's way and again he worshipped leaping and dancing before God and his answer to Michal's scorn of him is I'll dance to God's glory more recklessly even than this I'll gladly look like a fool for God and there's so much more about 60 psalms are attributed to David and in Chronicles it describes how David inaugurated the regular worship and praise of God. He put so many people in place to do that. In Samuel and um, in 1 Chronicles we find amazing prayers to God that show David's heart and his understanding of, of God. Uh, I've loved reading again uh, these words. Bill Johnson has said something like, in worship, David was like way ahead of his time, generations ahead. In a season, a, a, an old covenant focus on sacrifice and rituals, David was organising and participating in the praise and thanksgiving with musical instruments and voices. It was far more, in a sense, the worship as we know it in the new covenant sense. 2 Samuel gives us marvellous glimpses of David's thinking and David understood who he was to God and he surrendered himself to him. We can see that um, in how he lived but also in what he says. In 2 Samuel 7 21 he says, you know me master God just as I am. And he's speaking about becoming a king. You've done all this not because of who I am but because of who you are out of your very heart, but you've let me in on it. It's important for us to know who we are to God. And earlier in the week, Amy and Matthew helped with this for me. So David had an idea of who he was to God. And Matthew and Amy are gonna show who they are to God. So Matthew, can you hold that up? a precious son and Amy, can you show that yeah you can get it that's it hi a precious daughter yay so we are precious sons and daughters and we need to in the battles that we have in life we need to keep that truth close we need to keep on reminding of ourselves of who we are to God we can also see how David had a grasp of who God is Matthew and Amy again are you ready so David had some sense of who God is and Matthew and Amy are going to hold up some of the things. This is things that David said about God. God is serious. Okay, hold it really high. Business. God's a serious business. And then, Matthew, can you hold that one? His love never quits. Keeps on going. Okay. 
And then, Matthew, could you hold this one up nice and high? God rains, and that's Matthew and I had a conversation, not like weather rain, but meaning ruling as king of kings. So they're things David said about God, and then Matthew and Amy have got two things that they have thought about God. So, Amy thought God was brave. Can you hold that up? Yeah. There, that's it. Clever girl. Well done. Amy thought God was brave. And she thought God was interesting. And Matthew said God was awesome. And Matthew said God was loving. So here's a bit more of what David says about God. God is great, well worth praising. All the popular gods are stuff and nonsense, but God made the cosmos. Splendour and majesty flow out of him. Strength and joy fill his place. What I think gave David great fruit in his life is how he worked these things together. It's this wonderful word from David. God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. I love that. I'm going to hear from Matthew and Amy for the last time. So David knew how having that sense of God and knowing who he was to God, how that works together. And he said something amazing. He said, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. And Matthew and Amy and I, we've had a little think about the things that are in their lives. So Matthew, do you want to show your list first? This is the list Matthew came up with. Do you want to say, say the first one, Matthew? May. I have to hold it up high. That's it, because I can't see it. Mazes, Mazes maps, family, family, snails, snails places, because Matthew loves going places, toilets, toilets and pizza. pizza. I'm sure there's more than that, but that's what Matthew's got on his list. So if I just give you that one, that's a bit wet still, isn't it? Right, Amy's list is here. And these were the things that Amy thought of. She thought of things in her life. She loves baby bells, the cheeses, playing with Sky, her family, oranges, apples, and berries. And these are the things that Amy thought were in her life. Matthew and Amy were really serious when we filmed the lists, but when we were doing them, when I was painting the things on the list, they were really giggly about what they were going to have on their lists. What would our lists look like? What would we put on the list of our of the pieces from our life? It, it might be much more complex than what um, we would put on the list at three and ten. What would David have had laid out in his mind that were the pieces of his life that he put before God. When you think about him, how he was the youngest in his family and perhaps a bit disregarded because of that with seven older brothers. How he used the piece of his life of being a shepherd in his battle with Goliath because he knew how to, 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 to work a sling and he knew it had worked as a shepherd and he took that piece of his life into um, battle with Goliath. We, we see David showing mercy to Saul. We see him having to wait well in his life. All kinds of things were pieces of David's life. He had great victories. He also had great messes to deal with. His, he he had some made some terrible mistakes as a father. He, he ordered a census that God did not um, want him to do and obviously the mess he made with Bathsheba and Uriah but always David was placing the pieces of his life before God we see that he kept remaining faithful nothing is beyond God's reach no situation no uh, belief nothing nothing is beyond God's reach but I think in our lives surrender 
is key. Surrendering who we are and what's going on is key. And I think so often in our lives, and it makes no sense really, because if we know God's God, this does make no sense. But so often we can keep back bits of us that we can think, oh, well, I'll have that bit. I won't, as it were, surrender that bit to God. And that makes no sense. And I want to pray for us this morning that we will be able to say of ourselves that we that God makes our lives complete as we lay the pieces before him. The pieces we're proud of, the pieces we're not so proud of, the pieces that really trouble us or the pieces that make us sad. But as we lay them before God, as we surrender them to him, he can use them for good if we do that. And I want to pray for us this morning. Lord, I thank you for the, the words from David, Lord, that he said this of you. God made my life complete when I placed the pieces of my life before him. And Lord, I, I pray that we will, as David did, place all the pieces of our lives before you. The things we're proud of, the things we're not so proud of, the things that trouble us, the things that give us joy. Lord, would we surrender all to you and Lord would we uh, have that heart for worship that David did Lord we see him whatever was going on he came back to worship you whether he was triumphant whether he was troubled he always came back to you in worship and Lord I pray for us that we would do that Lord we would surrender ourselves to you we would give you the pieces of our lives and Lord you would make our lives complete and we would know that joy in Jesus name Amen Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning and I really hope that you've engaged with the Lord in some way. Do keep in touch with us using my, our emails at the end of the service and also don't forget we have an 11 o'clock Zoom time, coffee time and again details are shown at the end of the service. So may the Lord bless you this week, may you know his peace and his joy. Amen.